this is Dr. Do again. This video is outside of medicine. Continue the Iliad by Homer. I'm going to continue to read. As Zeus turned things over, that way seemed the best. The valiant friend in arms of Peleus' son Achilles would drive the children's Hector helmed in bronze back to Troy once more, killing them by platoons. And Zeus began with the Hector. He made the man a coward, Hector leaping back in his chariots, swerving to fly, shouted out flash, fresh orders, retreat children now. He knew that Zeus had tipped the scale against him, a rout. Not even the die-hard Lycians stood their ground. They all scattered in panic down to the last man when they saw their royal king speared in heart. Sarpedon sprawled there in the master of the dead. For man by the squad had dropped across his corpse, once Zeus stretched the tight the lethal line of battle. So then the Achaeans ripped the armor off his back, Sarpedon's gleaming bronze that Minotius son, the brave Patroclus, flung in the arms of Cochards, poised to speed those trophies back to the big ships and the storming Zeus was staring up Apollo. On with it now, sweet Sarpedon, clear of the weapons. Feel with my friend, and once you wipe the dark blood from his body, bear him far from the fighting, off and away, and bathe him well in a river's running tide, and anoint him with the deathless oils, dress his body in deathless ambrosial robes, then sent him on his way with the wind swift escort, twin brothers sleep and death, who with all good speed will set him down in the broad green land of Lycia. There these brothers and countrymen will bury the prince and full royal rites. With mounded tomb and pillar, these are the solemn honors or the dead. So he decreed, and the Phobos did not neglect the father's strong desires. Down from the idiot slopes he drove to the body field and lifted the prince Sarpodin clear of the weapons, bore him far from the fighting off and away, and bathed him well in the river running tide, and anointed him with the deathless oils, dressed his body in deathless ambrosial robes, then sent him on his way with the wind-swift escorts. Twin brothers sleep and death, who with all good speed set him down in Lycia's broad green land. But Patroclus, giving a cry to Automedon, weeping on his team, Patroclus went for choice and Lycia lines. Blind in his fatal friends, luckless soldier, if only he had obeyed Achilles, strict command. He might have escaped his doom, the stark night of death, but the will of Zeus will always overpower the will of man. Zeus, who strikes fear in even the bravest man of war and tears away his triumph. All in a lightning flash, and at other times he will spare a man to battle. Just as the urge the Petroclos fury now. Petroclos, who was the first you slaughtered, who the last when the great gods called you down to death? First Adrestus, one autonomous, then Echid close, then Pe Perimus, Mega's son, Epister and Melanippus, then in Flory, Elasus, Melius and Pilates. He killed them all, but the rest were burned, burnt on flight. And then the, there the Achaeans might have taken Troy, her towering gates, toppling under Patroclus' power, heading the vanguard, storming on with his spear. But Apollo took his stand on the massive ramparts, his mind blazing with death for him but help for Troy. Three times Patroclus charged the jut of high wall, three times Apollo battered the man and hurled him back, the god's immortal hand, beating down on the gleaming shield. Then at Patroclus' fourth thought, like something superhuman, the god shrieked down his winging words of terror. 
back, petrol clothes, prince, go back. It is not the will of fate that the proud children's citadel fell before your spear, not even before Achilles, far greater than you. And Patroclus gave proud, backing a good way off, clear of the deadly archer's wet wrath. But now Hector, bringing his high-strung team at the scanning gates, debating a moment, waiting should he drive back to the rout and soldier on, or call his armies now to rally within the ramparts? As he turned things over, Apollo stood beside him, taking the shape of that lusty, rugged fighter, Asius, an uncle of Stalin breaking Hector, a blood brother of Hecuba, son of Dimus, who lived in Phrygia near Sanguirian rapids, like him. Apollo, the son of Zeus, incited Hector. Hector, why stop fighting, neglecting your duty? If only I outfought you as you can outfought me, I'd soon teach you a shriek, or shirk your work in war. You'd pay the price, I swear, up with you fast. Lash those pounding stallions straight at Patroclus. You might kill him still. Apollos might give you glory. And back Apollo strode, a god in the wars of man, while glorious Hector ordered the skilled Cybrionis. Flog the team to no battle, to battle, Apollo passed on, wading into the rug, hurling Archives back in chaos, and handing glory to Hector and all the Trojan forces. But Hector ignored the Archives' message, killing none. He lashed his pounding standing straight at Petroclos, Petroclos over against him, leaped down from his car and hit the ground, his left hand shaking a spear and seized with his right jagged, glittering stone his hand could just cover. Patroclus fling it hard, leaning into the hive, not backing away from Hector, no, and no wasted shot, but he hit, he, hit his driver, a bastard son of famed King Priam, Cerberianus, yanking the ring back taut right between the eyes. The sharp stone crushed both brows. The skull caved in and both eyes bursted from their socket, dropped down in the dust before his feet as the rinseman vaulted, plunged off his well-wrought car like a driver. Cybronis' life be breath left his bones behind and you taunted his corpse. Petroclaus, oh my rider, look what a spring man a nimble, fleshy tumbler. Just think what he'd do at sea where the fish swarm. Why, the man could glut a fleet, diving for oysters, plunging overboard even in choppy, heavy seas, just as the dive to ground from his war car now. Even these children have their tumbler. What a leap. I'm going to stop here today and continue next time. Thank you for watching.